Horton, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm a postdoc in Danny Cole's group at Newcastle. And previously to that, I was a postdoc with the Open Force Fields. So I worked on bespoke fit, but today I'm not going to be talking about bespoke fit. I'm talking about functional form exploration that we've been doing with the Open Force Field technology and stack. And I've highlighted everyone involved there. It wouldn't be possible without everyone there. <laughs> Oh. Um, yeah. Okay, so just a bit of motivation. Why did we bother looking at functional form exploration? Because we've got the Leonard Jones 12.6 potential and it's it's really good, right? We've we've seen this week how well it's doing. Um it's it's very fast. I'm highlighting here the tick two from the, the benchmark series where open force field parsley 1.3 actually performs state of the art on, on this set with an RMSE of 0.7 kcals per mole in our free energy benchmarks, it does really, really well. Um, we, we like to use the Leonard Jones functional form because it's, it's very fast to compute. The um, dispersion parameter is just a one over R to the, the sixth term. And then if we square that, we get the repulsive term, which is the one over R to the 12. However, it's not actually physical. We know that there's better ways to model this. Um, and this comes from where we were computationally limited. We use this functional form, but the, there's actually better ways to, to compute this more realistic ways. So we should probably investigate those as computing the functional form becomes cheaper with advances in hardware. So traditionally trying to fit a, a new force field has been very, very difficult, but I want to highlight how easy it is now using the open force field infrastructure. Fitting a force field doesn't take tens of PhD students and postdocs. It actually can take just one person now, and it often is an open force field, one person setting up these calculations, pushing the button. So they've actually done a really good job at automating a lot of this infrastructure. So this functional form exploration wouldn't be possible without all of the hard work that they've done automating this. So I'm just giving a very kind of very brief overview of the open force field infrastructure, what we currently have. We, we pull data sets from thermal ML. That's where we get our physical properties. We've done a lot of work creating QM data sets for the valence fitting, and those are all stored on QC archive for anyone to access. And then we create data sets from that that people can use to fit their own force fields. And we publish with our force fields like Sage and Parsley, how can we fit it? Um, we, this all goes through force balance, which actually does the fitting of the force fields. And then we've created tools like open force field evaluator and the, the, and the toolkit, which, which help this process of translating our force field into systems that we can run an open MM and then refine the parameters. And the idea is to make systematic incremental improvements for our force field using this infrastructure, which is very easy to do. You can come up with a hypothesis about ways to improve the force field, and then we, we fit it and produce better force fields. And I'm just highlighting some of the, the improvements in, in the fit and data that we use. So we can actually use mixture properties now, which I think has been highlighted for the stage fitting, where we can fit to things that include water. So our force field is aware which water model that it's fit against, which is really good. So using this infrastructure now, what we wanted to work out is, well, what's the missing pieces to fit a new functional form? It, what is missing from this stack that would allow us to do that? And what we found is we just need a way to express our functional form in code and then translate that into an OpenMM system, basically, which we can then fit to some physical property or some valence property. And what we came up with was Smirnoff plugins. So this is just an extension to the Open Force Field Toolkit, if anyone's used that before. And all it does is read parameters that the toolkit doesn't know how to, to understand. It just extends the toolkit's knowledge of, of different functional forms. So what we do is, define our functional form in code. And then Smirnoff plugins automatically handles a lot of the, the hard work that we don't really want to think about when we're exploring new functional forms. So it'll automatically add one for interactions with in scaling. It knows how to work with virtual sites. It has a long range correction, which is all built on top of OpenMM. 
We can do frangie calculations with it. It's easy to install because it's all on Conda Forge. It's integrated with the entire OpenForceFill stack because we've got a really nice plugin architecture with the OpenForceFill toolkit. And it's, it's really easy to add new functional forms. So we just add the expression of our functional form. Smirnoff plugins does everything else. And we use the traditional API, which I'm showing on the, the right-hand side, um, to define our, our ForceFill functional form, add any parameters, and set up the force field to fit in. So now that we have our infrastructure to actually fix new functional forms, what we had to do is decide which, which ones are we interested in. So looking through the literature, there's a lot of new functional forms out there and people tend to do these for water. I think there's a lot of experimental data there. So there's, there's a lot of motivation to produce new functional forms and test them. And what we've implemented so far are, are two new functional forms in Smirnoff plugins that people can use right away. We've got the Buckingham 6-8 damped potential, which is physically motivated. We've got an exponential repulsion term. We've got this higher order expansion in the dispersion term and the stamping function. And we also found this quite interesting and quite different double exponential term where we've got two exponentials governing the repulsion and attraction terms, basically. And we decided to implement both in Smirnoff plugins. We um, would, we'd liked both of these terms because the, the double exponential, I'll, I'll start with that one, has a natural soft core. So this is defined as the two particles approach each other. So this is the distance here. And it's got links to the Leonard Jones functional form as well. So epsilon has the same meaning as it does in Leonard Jones. This is the well depth. Our min has the same meaning as it does here. This is the minimum distance where the, the minimum of the potential as they approach each other. But this alpha and beta term describes the steepness of the repulsion and the decay of the attraction. So these are like global parameters that we can fit to actually help it mimic other parameters, but it's actually cheaper to compute, which is quite nice. And as I said, the natural soft core makes it attractive for free energy calculations as well. Whereas the booking in damp 6A potential is, as I was saying, physically motivated, um, but this needs a damping function, which is quite expensive to compute when we're doing uh, simulations. So what we looked at was, well, can we make the double exponential potential match this more physically motivated potential? And we found out that we could. So on the right hand side, I'm showing action energies as a function of the oxygen oxygen distance in different water models. So in the blue slash orange lines at the top, that's tip 3P and tip 4P, and they overlap pretty well. I'm only showing the, the Van der Waals component of the energy here as well. This, this is not electrostatics. And in green, we've got tip 4P force balance, which is probably the most accurate four point water model of fixed charge that we have. And then in the red and purple lines, I'm showing the B68 model, which is published by the Rowley Group, and our double exponential curve fit to that model. So all we've done here is a very simple plot the interaction energies as a function of distance, and then a curve fit of the double exponential to that model. And we see that we can reproduce it very well. So we're interested in saying, how does this translate to physical properties once we get the, the potential correct? And what we found is that after a little bit of refitting, we can actually produce quite a competitive water model. So here I'm showing six different water properties of a, a range of temperatures. And in blue, we've got the experimental data. In um, orange, we have our double exponential B68 model fit to this data. And in green, we have the tip 4P force balance model. And in red, we've got a double exponential tip 3P model from the literature that we pulled out. And what we actually see in this, that our water model, after a few iterations in force balance fit to this experimental data, actually is very competitive with state-of-the-art water models as well. So that was really promising that our double exponential potential seemed like a, a good way to go. So then we thought, well, can we create a general transferable double exponential model? Our plan was to then transition Sage into a general model of double exponential functional form. So we just decided to keep the Sage Merck's types. We didn't want to do any new parameters. 
We kept epsilon exactly the same, converted sigma to our min. Uh, we kept alpha and beta from our optimized water model. So it's a, it's a global parameter that should be applied to all of the interactions. Uh, we then fit to the Sage physical property training data, which is about a thousand physical properties. <clears throat> and we also wanted to let the water relax as well. So we wanted to do co-optimization, which I think has been hinted at previously. Uh, but we included some pure water densities over a range of temperatures just to kind of regularize the water model so it didn't stray too far away from the really good model that we produced. <clears throat> and what we found is that double exponential is actually really competitive with Sage on the training set. I must highlight this is all on the training data. Um, so what I've done here is break down the training data by pure density, binary density, and enthalpy of mixing. And what we see in the RMSE is that the double exponential is very competitive compared to Sage and shown some slight improvements, especially in entropy of making as well, which is really promising because we basically started from Sage and then optimized from there. And on the right hand side, I'm showing that the movement of the water potential as a function. So again, we're at the oxygen oxygen distance and I'm plotting the interaction energy. I'm showing in blue the B68, so that's the published model. And in orange, I'm showing where we started from. So that was our optimized water model previously to just pure water properties. And in green, that's how much it changes fit into the mixture data with the regularization on pure density. When we dig further into the, the training data, we actually see a lot of the, the changes due to these water mixture properties allowing the water to co-optimize with our force field has actually helped it quite a lot. We see that we correct an issue with the enthalpy of mixing and we get much better agreement with, with the, the water properties. And that seems to be where most of the improvement is coming from, which is, is really promising. Hopefully that's something that back in the open force fields will fit in as well. Uh, we then did a, a valence fit of the force field to, to complete it. So we followed the normal open force fields pipeline of producing a general transferable force field. And we looked at the fragments of the protein ligand benchmark set, which we previously looked at with bespoke fit. So this is exactly the same set. And we, we measured similar things. So here we're measuring the maximum RMSD. So what we do is for the QM torsion profile, we do an MM relaxation at each point. And we measured the RMSD difference between the structures, between QM and MM. And we also measure the root and squared error in the energy profiles as well. And what we found is very similar performance to Sage. We found cases where it does maybe a little bit worse, and we found cases where it actually improves things as well. And the bottom one, I'm just highlighting the hysterically congested molecule where we thought maybe the double exponential is going to help, where it has this more realistic repulsion term, maybe this is a place where it can help. And we see some improvements there. So next, we wanted to benchmark the force fields. And traditionally, people would do protein ligands binding for energy calculations, but we, we don't have a protein force field for double exponential, and we don't have a way of fitting it yet either. So we then thought, well, how about hydration for energy calculations? But we don't have a framework to do those. So Simon very quickly put together Absol, which is a, a framework that anyone can use it's all on GitHub, where you can do hydration for energy calculations or solvation for energy calculations with any potential, Leonard Jones softcore or uh, a new functional form that you can come up with. Um, our next question was, well, how do you scale it? What we'd like to do is a nice linear lambda schedule when we scale our double exponential potential. But what we found is that when you plot the interaction as a function of lambda, it is the, the potential just disappears at zero and even looking at lambda at 0 0.05, there's it's quite a big difference in the, the potential energy surface. And this will probably lead to very poor phase space overlap when we're doing our free energy calculations. So what we actually came up with this lambda schedule where we uh, do a linear scaling of the function, but we also scale alpha and beta towards each other as well. And that has the effect of just flattening out the potential energy surface uh, quite nicely and leads to, to good phase space overlap, which, which I'm showing here. We did a calculation of uh, ethanol in methylpyridine, and we found that this schedule that we came up with 
tends to give very good face face overlap compared to the Leonard Jones softball potential as well. So we, we seem to be doing things correctly. As it's maybe not optimal, but it, it does work. So then we've tried to come up with a, a test set and we thought maybe transfer free energies are a good way to go. We, we had some inspiration from from previous papers that Open Force Builder looked at and we thought, well, transfer free energy, we can measure uh, moving from a high dielectric medium like water to a low dielectric. And that's kind of a, a surrogate for our protein ligand benchmarks because we don't have a protein force field yet. So this is what we decided to go with if we measured the hydration for energy and the non on aqueous solvation free energy. And then we can combine this using this equation to make a transfer free energy. So we had picked 72 solutes from free solves that also had uh, data points in Minnesota solvation database. And we did 284 transfer free energies. So I'll start with the hydration for energy. What we actually see is it has quite low accuracy compared to SAGE which at first was surprising because we did really well on these water mixture properties. So it was a bit, bit surprising that we're actually quite a lot worse than SAGE for hydration for energy. And it seems to be a systematic um, error in our predictions of the hydration for energy. And then if we look at the non-aqueous solvation for energy, again, we are quite a lot worse than SAGE. And again, there's a systematic offset in our predictions as well. But then when we get to the transfer energy, things start to change. And we're actually significantly better than SAGE here. So the, the systematic offset in our prediction seems to cancel out. And we actually get quite a good prediction of transfer free energy, which is, is very promising for protein ligand binary free energies, hopefully. So hopefully, I've convinced you that we can fit new functional forms using the open force build software, and that it's very easy to do it now. Anyone can go away, install this through Conda. You can make your own functional form. You can train it. And the Open Force Build software stack makes this very, very easy to do. And I'm excited to see what other functional forms we're, we're going to investigate and what we, we can fit and how far we can take this. And OpenMM, I should say as well, this is all built on OpenMM. And their GPU support for custom forces actually minimizes the loss that we're seeing in, in um, in simulation time. So for ethanol, for the hydration for energy calculation of ethanol, uh, we get 185 nanoseconds per day on a single GPU compared to 255 nanoseconds a day that we were getting for LJ softball. So for free energy calculations, you do see a slowdown with Leonard Jones because you have to go through the same custom potential when you use the soft core. So we're, we're not too far behind with double exponential. And for anyone that's interested in using Double Exponential, you can just Condor install it and actually use it now as well. So we've got a package called DE Force Fields. And if you Condor install that, you can just use it through the toolkit. The toolkit can run this. So in the future, we want to look at maybe some QM derived starting points. One of the thoughts that we had is that we're stuck in the, the minimum of the Leonard Jones potential. We haven't actually escaped that. Because double exponential is good at mimicking potentials, maybe it's just reproducing the Leonard Jones potential. Um, and we also want to find more uh, physical property data to fit to. And we're obviously really interested in the progress of the protein force field because we kind of want to copy that and produce a double exponential version of, of it as well. And then we can do protein ligand binary for energies and confirm that our force field is, is worth investigating further. And so, yeah, hopefully I've convinced you that we can fit new functional forms and it is very easy doing this using the Open Force Field software. So, yeah, I just want to thank everyone, especially the Open Force Field team, like to say this is all built on their work. It wouldn't be possible without the, the hard work that they've done and my uh, the funders as well. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.